Okay, so we're going to continue. And we're going to read Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 26 now. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell one another will make my people forget my name, just as their ancestors forgot my name through Baal worship. Let the prophet who has a dream recount the dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain? declares Yahweh. So why does the Most High Yahweh ask you this? For what has straw to do with grain? Well, let's go ahead and uh, find out. And let's read, starting off in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 16. Yahweh, their God, will save his people on that day as a shepherd save his flock. They will sparkle in his land like jewels in a crown. How attractive and beautiful they will be. Grain will make the young men thrive and new wine the young woman. Okay, so why does it says here how attractive and beautiful they will be? Well, because the Most High Yahweh says that he will restore our fortunes before our eyes. This is the reason why it says this here in Isaiah 53 and 2. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of a dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Okay? This is the reason why it says this here. Uh, let's go ahead and read this. In Isaiah chapter 62, starting at verse 1. For to desire one's sake, I will not keep silent. For Yahweh Washlam's sake, I will not remain quiet, till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And again, the Most High Yahweh puts His Spirit on His servants, on His prophets, on His children. Okay, He put His words in our mouth. So this is why it says, For to Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Yahweh Washlam's sake, I will not remain quiet. Okay. The Most High Yahweh says that he has uh, placed watchmen on our walls, and they will never be quiet day or night. Why? Because we will continue to call on the name of Yahweh, our God. So, let's go ahead and read this. Verse 2 says, the nations will see your vindication. You see that? That's the reason why they will be so attractive and beautiful in the eyes of Yahweh. Because Yahweh, our God, he will give us our vindication. So it says, the nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of Yahweh will bestow. It says, you will be a crown of splendor in Yahweh's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. All right. So that is the reason why it says here in Zechariah 9 and 17, how attractive and beautiful they will be. Grain will make the young men thrive and new wine the young woman. Alright, why? Because, you know, all of this is given through the Most High Yahweh, through His Spirit, by trusting in His words. Alright, by, you know, basically hoping in His words and trusting in His name. So Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1 says, Who is like the wise? Who knows the explanation of things? A person's wisdom brightens their face and changes its hard appearance okay so that's the reason why you know the most high Yahweh says that his people will basically uh enjoy their inheritance let's go ahead and see if we can find that okay so let's go ahead and read in Obadiah chapter 1 verse 16. Just as you drink on my holy hill, so all the nations would drink continually. They would drink and drink and be as if they had never been. But on Mount Tezion will be deliverance. It will be holy and Jacob will possess his inheritance. Okay. 
It says Jacob will be a fire and Joseph a flame. Esau will be stubble. All right, why? Well, you know, again, most high willing, if we have time, we will find out why Esau will be stubble. And they will set him on fire and destroy him. There will be no survivors from Esau. Why? Because Esau has forfeited his life, shaming his own house. All right? And it says Yahweh has spoken. So let's go ahead and continue here. And now let's read in Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 17, where it says, Therefore, this is what the sovereign Yahweh says, I will gather you from the nations and bring you back from the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you back the land of Yasharal again. They will return to it and remove all its vile images and detestable idols. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. Okay? So, which brings us back to this scripture here in Jeremiah 23 and 28. Let the prophet who has a dream recount the dream. But let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares Yahweh. Jeremiah 23 and 29. It's not my word like fire, declares Yahweh. And like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Therefore, declares Yahweh, I am against the prophets who steal from one another words, supposedly from me. All right, which is a precept to this scripture here. Let's see if we can find this. In Ezekiel 13 and 6, it says, Their visions are false and their divinations a lie. Even though Yahweh has not sent them, they say, Yahweh declares and expect him to fulfill their words. You see that? Again, they believe in lies and fairy tales and things that's not real. But these people, you know, they expect the Most High Yahweh to fulfill these things that's not real. These things that the Most High Yahweh never spoke into being. Okay? They expect Him to fulfill those things. And it's impossible. Alright? Because why? Because the Most High is not a liar. And He does not change. Okay? He does not take back His word. You understand what I'm saying? What He has decreed shall happen. And, you know... It shall be ordained by Yahweh, our God, who has no image, who has no, no form. So that's why saying, you know, these people's visions and, and what's coming out of their mouth is false. And their divinations is a lie. Okay? Their whole, you know, practice of worshiping God, quote unquote, is a lie. You understand that? They believe in a lie. And they think that that's the way of life. And it's not. It's the way of death. That's the reason why the scripture says there seem a way to be right, but in the end is death. Okay? Their visions are false and their divinations a lie. But they expect the Most High to make it true. And then when it's not true, right, what happens? These people become enraged against God. You see that? This is the reason why it says this here. This is the reason why we bring out this scripture a lot of times. Because this is a very, very key scripture. Isaiah 8 and 20. Consult the Most High's instruction and the testimony of warning. Why? Because the Most High Yahweh always gives you warning. So it says, if anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light in them. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Then they will look towards the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom. And they will be thrust into utter darkness, right? In other words, their spirit is going to become darkened, all right? These people are going to be given over to demons, all right? Since they want to light these fires and they want to worship these demons, well, the Most High House is that he will give them over to these demons, 
Do you understand that? And these demons will not let these people sleep. This is the reason why it says that the wicked get no rest. All right, because the Most High will literally give your mind over to demons. Do you understand that? And that's what it means to be thrust into utter darkness. All right, because why? Well, let's understand this here. Now, the Most High has words. You know, when you when you trust in His words, when you hope in His words, that's light. Okay. But when you are not trusting in the Most High Yahweh's words, when you have no fear of God, well then, your mind is full of darkness. You see that? That's why it says this here. This is where we can find this. In Isaiah 45 and 19. I have not spoken in secret from somewhere in a land of darkness. I have not said... To the descendants of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, Yahweh, speak the truth. I declare what is right. You see that? The Most High is not a liar, okay? The Most High is not a man that he should change his mind. A human being that he should lie. Yahweh, our God, speaks the truth. You understand? So this is the reason why, you know, you have to be willing to walk in the ways of the Most High. You have to be willing to trust in his name to hope in his words because that's all we have is hope all right if you're hoping in anything else well then you know you're going to do that to your own harm okay because you're going against the maker of all and now let's go ahead and read this in zechariah chapter 5 verse 5 then the angel who was speaking to me came forward and said to me look up and see what is appearing i asked what is it he replied it is a basket and he added, this is the inequity of the people throughout the land. Sorry. <clears throat> so basically, you know, the inequities of the people throughout the land are, you know, many people worshiping idols. Many people are uh, into spiritual fornication. This is what it's talking about. This is why it says this here in Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 6. I have listened attentively. Which, you know, we brought this scripture out in a previous video and we're going to use it again here. So again, I have listened attentively, but they do not say what is right. None of them repent of their wickedness, saying, what have I done? Each pursues their own course, like a horse charging into battle. Even the stork in the sky knows her appointed seasons, and the dove, the swift, and the thrush observe the time of their migration. My people do not know the requirements of Yahweh. How can you say we are wise, for we have the law of Yahweh, when actually the lying pen of the scribes has handled it falsely? The wise will be put to shame. They will be dismayed and trapped. Why? Since they have rejected the word of Yahweh, what kind of wisdom do they have? You see that? Okay. So this is the reason why many people are going to become enraged. Because why? Because if it's not according to what Yahweh says, then it's not going to happen. End of story. It does not matter what you believe. All right? Remember that. Okay? Just because you believe it, it doesn't mean it's true. You understand that? I mean, that's the reason why a lot of you people are waiting for somebody to come and pick you up because you are lost. You're confused. You understand that? Me personally, I am confident. I'm not the one with questions, right? You people are the ones with questions. You're the one waiting and hoping for somebody to pick you up, right? You're the one waiting for a new body. You're the one waiting to be teleported to somewhere else. So this is the reason why the Most High Yahweh says that, you know, if you reject the word, you're going to do that to your own harm. Because the Most High Yahweh is going to make sure that His words come to pass and nothing else. Okay? Now let's read Micah chapter 4 verse 9. Why do you now cry aloud? Have you no king? Has your ruler perished? That pain seizes you like that of a woman in labor? See that? Why? Well, because this is part of the curses in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. I'll go ahead and show you that. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's start off at verse 65. Well, sorry. Verse 64. 
So it says, Yahweh will scatter you among all nations, from one end of the earth to the other. There you will worship other gods, gods of wood and stone, which neither you nor your ancestors have known. Among those nations, you will find no repose, no resting place. You see that? No resting place. No resting place for the sole of your foot. There, Yahweh will give you an anxious mind, eyes weary with longing, and a despairing heart. You see that? Always waiting for somebody to pick you up. All right? It says, you will live in constant suspense, filled with dread both night and day, never sure of your life. Okay? Again, this is the reason why many people go to church. This is the reason why, you know, they they are hell-bent on religion. Because deep down inside, right, you know, they may they may uh, talk a good one, right? But deep down inside, they are not sure of their life, okay? And that's the reason why, you know, us, the servants of Yahweh, me personally, I don't glow over anybody. I do what I do, you know, for the sincere, for those who are willing and obedient, okay? But at the end of the day, I will always... Stand firm for what I believe in, and you know, I will never be discouraged just because other people don't believe in what the Most High Yahweh is showing us. Okay, so we have to, you know, do this because this is what the Most High Yahweh created us to do. All right, because why? We are His servants, and we are confident. You understand? We are confident in what we believe in. So this is the reason why it says that these people here who believe in lies, you know, they will never be sure of their life. Yahweh is life. Okay, so they rather death over life. Like the scripture says here. Okay. So let's start off in Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 2. It says here. They will be exposed to the sun and the moon and all the stars of the heavens which they have loved and served and which they have followed and consulted and worshipped, they will not be gathered up or buried, but will be like dung lying on the ground. Wherever I banish them, all the survivors of this evil nation will prefer death to life, declares Yahweh Almighty. Say to them, this is what Yahweh says, when people fall down, do they not get up? When someone turns away, do they not? return why then have this people turned away why does Yahweh always turn away they cling to deceit they refuse to return okay so Michael 4 and 9 again why do you now cry aloud have you no king has your ruler perished that pain seizes you like that of a woman in labor reef in agony daughter to Zion one like a woman in labor for now you must leave the city to camp in the open field. You will go to Babylon. There you will be rescued. There Yahweh will redeem you out of the hand of your enemies. You see that? Okay? So this is the reason why. You know, we basically read this here in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 7. Even the stork in the sky knows her appointed seasons, and the dove, the swift, and the thrush observed the time of their migration. But my people do not know the requirements of Yahweh. Alright? Again. It says, For now you must leave the city to camp in the open field. You will go to Babylon and there you will be rescued. So let's go ahead and read in Jeremiah 30 and 11. Restoration of Yasharal and Yahweh. I am with you and will save you, declares Yahweh. Though I completely destroy all the nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. This is what Yahweh says. Your wound is incurable, your injury beyond healing. There is no one to plead your cause, no remedy for your sore, no healing for you. All your allies have forgotten you. They care nothing for you. I have struck you as an enemy would and punish you as would the cruel because your guilt is so great and your sins so many. 